It was a 40 feet long and 12 feet tall beast, the king of dinosaurs. Its massive and muscular body weighed up to eight tons. I guess eight tons is a reasonable estimate. I think it's for an average T-Rex though. The Scotty specimen weighed 10.1 tons. I'm nowhere near a T-Rex fan or anything, I'm just a fan of paleontology. And from what I heard of, the T-Rex is the largest terrestrial carnivore. Yeah, size of dinosaurs like this are determined by mass. I'll get into that deeper in the video, but hey. Welcome back to another video! Today's video, we're going to be talking about bright sides, 8 dinosaurs that can beat T-Rex in a fight. Let's see how accurate it is! Its serrated teeth were sharp, and its jaws had a bite so strong, they could crush a car. The creature had two powerful legs. It lived in forested river valleys all across North America, almost 70 million years ago. Didn't it live to the end of the Cretaceous? It lived around 68 to 66 million years ago during the Maastrichtian age, but hey, I'm just nitpicking. I'm talking about the most famous movie star among dinosaurs, T-Rex. Okay, so first of all, dinosaurs cannot roar. There's no evidence of dinosaurs having a larynx that allows them to roar like mammals. Second, are you just trying to appease to the mainstream fans instead of sticking to science? T-Rex isn't spelled that way. It's supposed to be a T, and then there's a full stop like that, and then Rex doesn't need any capital letters. Already three mistakes in this video. It's not looking good. It was very smart with a brain twice as big as that of any large meat-eating dino. It was slower than other hunters, developing a speed of up to 12 miles per hour. I mean, it's a fairly reasonable estimate. It's just a lower estimate, though. I'm sure they're not going to contradict themselves, right? Its other weakness was its small arms. Some scientists think they were just an evolutionary leftover, like the pelvic bones of some snakes. The T-Rex had small lungs because it didn't even need them. Most modern predators use their head to catch prey. So we can safely say that the T-Rex also uses its head to hunt. It didn't need arms to hunt, damn it. Plus, the T-Rex's arms still had some usage in other areas. Maybe mating or something, but I'm no paleontology expert, so correct me if I'm wrong. But others believe T-Rex used its arms to hunt. No, it didn't. I explained why earlier. Its four-inch claws helped the animal out. T-Rex was undoubtedly frightening, but surprisingly, there were even scarier dinosaurs in the past. Around 100 million years ago, there was a giant creature with the name that meant a spine lizard. It was Spinosaurus. Um. Uh, okay, so this is made in 2022, right? How come the Spinosaurus still looks like this? What universe are we living in? Is that designed from 2009? 13 freaking years and some people still believe that the Spinosaurus looks like this. Spinosaurus, the largest carnivorous dino. That how belongs to the T-Rex. The Spinosaurus is the longest theropod, but it's not the largest. Also, you can't even spell the Spinosaurus correctly. Poor guy is just getting the worst treatment possible. It was bigger than T-Rex, and could grow almost 60 feet long. You said the Spinosaurus is 60 feet long, yet you're mentioning 60 feet for the height of the Spinosaurus, and that the dinosaur is even longer. What universe is this channel on? Also, 18 meters is way too much for today's Spinosaurus. If it's made in 2009, then it would be reasonable, but it's not 2009 anymore, come on. Its weight could be as great as 22 tons. Where are you getting all this bullshit information from? Monsters Resurrected? It seems like this video is trying to appease the Spino fans. I don't think many Spino fans would like this depiction of Spinosaurus either. I think they'd rather stick to science. The animal had long spines on its back. They could grow up to 7 feet long and were connected by folds of skin. They formed something that looked like a sail. Some scientists think it was a hump Spinosaurus used to store water. We don't know for sure, honestly. But I can tell you that the Spinosaurus didn't use its hump to store water. Maybe it's used for mating. Maybe it's used to regulate body temperature. Maybe it's used to store fat. Maybe it's used for navigation. But I've never heard of someone who said that the Spinosaurus used its hump to store water. This dino had dense bones and short hind limbs. Why didn't you give it short hind limbs then? Oh, is it because you want to appease the mainstream? You're allegedly trying to stick to science, but you're also sticking to the mainstream. 
What is going on? Researchers believe that these dinos could use their flat and wide clawed feet for paddling. This was the first dino that could ever swim. Any dinosaur can swim, by a study found in 2021. Probably except for ankylosaurs, but most dinosaurs can swim pretty well. But they didn't really need to swim. The Spinosaurus, however, needed to swim. Because it's a semi-aquatic dinosaur, and most of its meals are fish. Also, to avoid competition with Cacarodontosaurus, which filled the niche of the larger sauropods and ornithopods, the Spinosaurus would have to hunt fish instead. Unfortunately, it couldn't process smells like most other theropods. These were a group of two-legged carnivorous dinosaurs that appeared on Earth 230 million years ago. How about Therizinosaurus and Ornithomimosaurus? Can't forget about those! That's why the animals the creature hunted could hide from it on land. The Spino Dino spent most of its time in the water. It roamed the swamps of North Africa and mostly fed on fish, big prehistoric sharks, and sometimes other dinosaurs. Couldn't you just use a squally Corax silhouette instead of a Megalodon silhouette? Maybe a Crotoxa Rhino as well, but don't, don't, please don't pull the Megalodon in. It had a long, thin, and narrow snout like a crocodile. Unlike other dinos of its kind, which had curved teeth, Spinosaurus had conically shaped straight teeth. Giganotosaurus, which is the Greek word for giant southern lizard. Where did the O go? You're mistaking the Giganotosaurus for a freaking sauropod. Oh, it's a nomen dubium. But still, where did the O go? Was considered the largest meat eating dino until Spinosaurus was found. Excuse me? The Giganotosaurus was found around eight decades later than the Spinosaurus. What kind of myth is this video on? It lived around 100 million years ago in South America, around 30 million years before T Rex appeared there. It lived around 99.6 to 95 million years ago, but hey, 99.6 million is still a bit nitpicky. Also, the T Rex didn't live in South America, it lived in North America. Didn't you say that the T-Rex lived in North America earlier? It was longer and taller, but more slender than T-Rex. Yes, it is more slender. Therefore, it is lighter and mass turns smaller. You can stop saying that other theropods are larger than the T-Rex. And while T-Rex had two fingers, this giant had three. It walked upright. You're giving the Giganotosaurus the stance of a freaking kangaroo. How could this get any worse? On its two big and very strong legs, its tail was pointed and thin, which helped the creature make fast turns while running and keep its balance. The animal could move at a speed of up to 31 miles per hour. T-Rex's maximum speed was 25 miles per hour at the most. You said that the T-Rex ran at 12 miles per hour. This video has no consistency. Any faster than that, and the giant could lose its balance and fall over. Giganotus oh, it just broke its own skeleton like that. Okay, then. Taurus had two arms with sharp claws. It was mostly an opportunistic meat eater feeding on everything it found on its way. <laughs> no! Why are you giving the giga? <sighs> Okay, let's continue. Its bite wasn't as strong as T-Rex's, but it still managed to deal with some bigger animals, like herbivore dinosaurs. Maybe there was even an Argantinosaurus among them, the biggest animals ever found. Blue whale! Also, you didn't spell the Argentinosaurus properly, but theoretically a Giganotosaurus hunting an Argentinosaurus is possible? But at the same time, they lived in different formations. I don't know to be honest, but I think you meant that the Mapusaurus hunted Argentinosaurus. It's a close cousin to Giganotosaurus. It's hard to imagine how Giganotosaurus could take down a 50-ton beast on its own. The Argentinosaurus weighed 84 tons. If it weighed 50 tons, it would be smaller than a freaking Brachiosaur. That's why scientists think they may have hunted in groups. The animal's only weakness was its small brain. It was twice smaller than T-Rex's. This means the T could at least win a chess game. It just wins anyway. It's larger in mass, more intelligent, has a stronger bite, has forward-facing eyes. God, there's so, so many qualities that make the T-Rex just superior to almost any other dinosaur or well, any other theropod. Of course, there's more of a chance to lose against a Triceratops or something, but man, T-Rex will kill literally any other theropod. 
Big retractable sickle shaped claws in the creature's feet are great for cutting. No. Just no. It is more than likely that younger raptors use them to climb trees, and it is more likely that the raptors use their sickle claws to do a hypothetical method known as raptor prey restraint. Whatever their purpose, they didn't use their sickle claws to disembowel the prey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Utah Raptor. That's a mini T-Rex that lived 125 million years ago. Okay, three things. One, the Utah Raptor lived 135 to 130 million years ago during the Valanginian Age to the Hauterivian Age of the Early Cretaceous. Two, the Utah Raptor has a more robust build than other raptors. And three, the Utah Raptor is not a mini T-Rex. It's a huge terrestrial hawk. If a big T-Rex was coming for you, you could hide under a rock or some other place where it wouldn't be able to reach you. But there would be no place where its mini version couldn't follow you. Also, I forgot to mention that these facts have nothing to do with those creatures being a T-Rex. How come a Utah Raptor, which weighs just half a ton, possibly compete with a 10-ton predator? I doubt that a group of them would even want to compete with a T-Rex. Discovered in Utah, strong, toothy, and armored with huge claws, more than nine inches long. An adult Utah Raptor was 20 feet long and five feet tall at the hip. These creatures were covered in feathers. This is why fully grown animals look like gigantic turkeys. The Utah Raptor's main weakness was their size. They were a bit smaller than many other dinos, but these guys made up for that by hunting in packs. I don't think these animals had an intellectual capacity to hunt in packs like wolves. Like, even if the Utah Raptor do hunt in packs, they still wouldn't dare to rival a 10-ton apex predator. It's just wrong in every single level. It is more possible that the Utah Raptors hunt in loose gangs. Like, one of them just, one of them goes after a weaker prey, and then so many others just join in without coordination, but they still attack at the same time. Planet Dinosaur did a much better job at this. They showcase loose gang behavior instead of pack behavior. Anyway, out with the rambling, let's continue. Allosaurus, which means a different lizard in Greek, was a massive carnivore reaching 40 feet in length and weighing two tons. Eight to nine meters, 1.4 tons. This guy also has no chance of beating a T-Rex. It's like putting a crocodile against a healthy full-grown elephant. It roamed the Earth around 150 million years ago. Similar to T-Rex, this dino had strong back legs and a large snout. Its mouth was full of sharp teeth. The animal easily lost them when eating, but they usually grew back. Allosaurus was already fully grown by the age of 15, and its lifespan was around 28 years. When will we just stop rambling and get into the fight? The creature had a short neck and a long, narrow skull. Disproportionately big compared to the rest of its body. This dino also had a pair of horns above its eyes, and ridges along the top of its nasal bones leading to those horns. These horns are most likely used for display. I don't think they're fit for combat. It's not a Pachycephalosaurus head dome. Allosaurus chased big herbivore dinosaurs. When several Allosauruses gathered in a group, they could take down even such colossal creatures as Apatosaurus. More mispronouncing! Holy shit, you're mispronouncing even the simple, simpler names like Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus, it isn't that hard. Oh my god, I'm slowly going to grow more and more insane watching this video. But scientists still doubt if they could cooperate because these dinos were generally not too friendly toward one another. They wouldn't be friendly to one another. They do not hunt in packs. This goes for any other theropod. They hunt and lose gangs. Some just kill each other in a feeding frenzy. Some of the animal's bones had an hourglass shape, which made them lighter and reduced their strength. No, the Allosaurus didn't have hourglass shaped bones. I can't believe I have to say that. They were similar to the hollow bones modern birds have. Another weakness of this dino was its bite. It was less powerful than that of some modern animals, like lions, alligators, or leopards. Scientists think Allosaurus may have used its skull as a hatchet. No, it didn't. No one cares. The Rizinosaurus was one of the freakiest dinos out there. It lived 100 to 60 million years ago. No, it lived 70 million years ago. Also, if it lived 60 million years ago, 
we have solid evidence of non-avian dinosaurs living after the KPG extinction. It had a very small head and bizarre feet with four toes, unlike their ancestors that had three. Its body was covered with feathers. I think it was covered in more downy feathers instead of those wing-like feathers. Dominion got something right at least. This weirdo had the longest claws scientists have ever recorded. They were three feet long each. These claws were curved and sharp. The dino used them to collect plants for lunch. Scientists are still not sure if this creature was a herbivore or carnivore, or both. The dino had a long neck. There were no teeth in its upper jaw. Its wrist bones were like the ones modern birds have. The Rhizinosaurus might have evolved from a meat-eating to plant-eating animal throughout time. Unfortunately, in comparison with meat-eaters, herbivore dinosaurs were much weaker. Triceratops! Ankylosaurus! Hell, even a Montosaurus! I'm sick and tired of herbivores being treated as can fodder. And still? Those claws can make its enemies think twice. Yeah, but the tears will still kill it anyway. One bite on the neck and it's game over. High-spined lizard, or a Crocanthosaurus, lived 110 million years ago. It was two feet shorter than T-Rex, but had a similar body structure. You undersized the acro- Oh my god. More misspelling, more mispronunciations, more missizing. This video is just making me angrier the more I watch it. It's just so bad, it's not even good in any way. I don't even get ironic enjoyment out of this. Like T-Rexes, these creatures often went after bigger and more challenging animals. For example, with those backbones so hard, it seemed as if they were carrying a giant turtle shell, like Ankylosaur. Where do you get that from? The high-spined lizard was very territorial. It had a brain shaped like the letter S and an excellent sense of smell. What made a Crocanthosaurus vulnerable was its small arms. And still, the creature used them to hunt other animals surprisingly well. The dino pulled its catch close to its torso, which was like a hug you wouldn't be able to escape from. Uh... Diplodocus lived 150 million years ago. The 90-foot-long creature was possibly the longest dinosaur ever. You mentioned Argentinosaurus. That is longer than the Diplodocus. How could this get any worse? Holy shit. Its tail, which could reach 46 feet in length, was the longest tail of any animal ever. And its neck was more than 20 feet long. The underside of the dino's tail had two rows of bones, which made the creature even stronger and more mobile. Diplodocus didn't look scary. Long-necked, gentle, peacefully munching on plants, until it used its tail like a whip making even the scariest meat eaters back away. This tail was the center of the dino's mass. No, it wasn't. Also, if the Diplodocus whipped its tail, its tail is going to break. Yes, it would hurt predators, but it would also hurt the Diplodocus. Which was why Diplodocus could move very quickly. Scientists first thought, this is a lizard-like animal, but its posture was more like that of an elephant. Plus, Diplodocus had nasal openings on its forehead. I'm internally screaming right now. The dino's weakness was its small teeth and weak force bite. Quetzalcoatlus was the biggest flying animal ever. Hatsagopteryx. It was likely more robustly built than the Quetzalcoatlus. It lived 70 million years ago and controlled the skies of North America. Didn't it live to the end of the Cretaceous as well? 68 to 66 million years ago. It was a toothy, pin-headed creature with a blunt snout. It was as tall as a giraffe and weighed 550 pounds. Quetzalcoatlus had a small torso and long neck and legs. Its wings were short compared to the rest of its body, but still long enough to stretch for 40 feet. Scientists think this animal could fly at a speed of up to 80 miles per hour and travel 400 miles in a day. This dino was weaker than, let's say, T-Rex or most other carnivores of that time, but it had powerful muscles, which helped the animal rise into the air in the blink of an eye. That is how the video ends. No, nothing. Just, that's how the video ends. No mentioning of a Triceratops being a T-Rex. No mentioning of an Ankylosaur being a T-Rex. No mentioning of a Montosaur being a T-Rex. Although, to be fair, the T-Rex has a slightly more chance of winning against the Montosaur. Even though the Montosaur is very capable of defending itself. The only dinosaur in this video that could beat a T-Rex is the Diplodocus. 
That's it. This video didn't even say the Argentinosaurus can beat a T-Rex. Or the fact that any big sauropod can just kill a T-Rex by stomping on it. Just using their immense weight to crush the T-Rex. This is genuinely one of the worst paleontology videos to ever exist. It has been deleted, but eh. Ugh. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you guys next time. Peace.